Okay, let me scoot over. Come on, man. Hey, get over here. Get over here. Okay. So what's going on, guys? Welcome back to New Stuff TV, the Untechnical Tech Channel. Me and Raylan decided to do things a little un informal today because I just wanted to tell you about my iPhone 13 Pro Max experience over the last couple of weeks. Phone is still pretty brand new on the market. It is the latest iPhone you can get and the biggest one you can get. So we just gonna sit here on the couch as Raylan sniffs me because he knows I have treats. Hold on, let me, let me get him situated. Look, hey, look, listen to me, man. Listen to me, open. Look, come around here. Look, come around, open. There we go. <laughs> okay, all right, got my baby situated. Now, you get some, this is sweet potato and duck. Sweet potato and duck snacks as we talk about iPhone 13 Pro Maxes. But I do have some notes on here on my Galaxy Note 20 Ultra because that's the phone I prefer to use. Believe it or not, man, I got this brand new, you know, $1,300 iPhone and I just, I don't think it's for everybody, man. Uh, I think it's a great phone though. So this conversation we're gonna have is basically, I'm a first time iPhone user. And I just wanted to tell you how, what it's like as a, as a career Galaxy Note slash Android user to use an iPhone. Dude, I got one more treat. I got one more treat, dude, and that's it. That's all you get, man, there you go. <laughs> it's all over the place. All right, go somewhere, man. I, I'm, I'm empty, I'm cashed out. <laughs> Anyways, so let's get into some stuff, man. First of all, the argument over Android versus iOS really comes down to one thing, and that is, are you a left or right brain thinker? And I actually, you know, getting this phone, I decided to kind of survey my friends and circle of people, and I asked them to, you know, kind of take a quiz and, you know, see if they were left brained or right brain people, you might need to figure this out. And then I would ask them what kind of phone they used. And nine times out of 10, if they were right brain individuals, they would actually go for an iPhone. They prefer to use an iPhone. If they were left brain, they would prefer an Android. That was through my uh, survey that I took. I'm split right down the middle. Like it's almost a 50, 50 either way but I tend to lean more on the left brain side when it comes to a lot of things. Cause I like things to make sense, have order and you know, stuff like that. And I'm not saying the iPhone doesn't make sense, but when you think about some of these things that you go through with an iPhone, it doesn't make sense. It's more of a created phone. It's not a creator phone. It's more of a creative phone in the sense of the system, how bubbly and inspiring it is. It's, it's really, it, it moves really fast. It's really snappy and everything. And it's really bubbly, lots and lots of animations, which kind of got on my nerves as an Android user. Like this is too stinking bubbly. So now I'll get into some things that I really just didn't care for about the phone as a first time uh, iOS user or first time iPhone user. And the first thing on my list is the bloatware. Now, People consider bloatware to be different things. Uh, my phone is unlocked from T-Mobile and it, it, I got it from the Apple store and it seemed to have quite a bit of bloatware on it, which is excess iOS apps that I didn't want. Like, why would I even use this? Like, why can't I just go to your store and download this? So bloatware, I had to go, you know, disable a bunch of stuff or at least hide it from my homepage because the homepage was just inundated with apps. It was very overwhelming. So my first experience opening up or turning on the phone, it was like, man, that's a lot of bloatware. But then I get into the fact that there is no included charger. Thank goodness. Uh, Anchor decided to send over their uh, Nano Pros, which is their new, smaller, more colorful chargers. Man, these things are freaking awesome. They're tiny, tiny, tiny. That means you don't have to, you know, plug it in and then worry about where you're gonna plug in the next thing or it, it doesn't hog up the whole outlet. You know what I'm saying? And they're beautiful. So if you got it plugged in somewhere, it's not really an eyesore. These things are really freaking gorgeous. I happen to be a fan of this blue one right here because it kind of matches the, the iPhone color. It's not a perfect match, but from a distance, it's a good look, man. So if you have have lost your original iPhone charger or just need to have an extra one, man. These Anchor Nano Pros are what's up. Now, the next thing I'm having a little trouble with is the swipe gestures or lack thereof. Uh, in Android, you know, I just swipe from left to right to go back and stuff like that. Now, it is available in iOS, but it's not available in every app. Like if you wanna go back in the app, a lot of times it will work, but as a, as a general, you know, as a, as a general practice throughout the phone's system, you can't do that. <laughs> and I'm wondering why 
you know, on iOS, I had this back button or back, you know, word at the top left of the screen when all I should have to do is just swipe. This is a big phone and my thumb is down here. A swipe gesture would have been really nice to have there. So that's kind of been annoying as a transition from an Android or, or a uh, Galaxy Note user. But the next thing that I'm really not too fond of is the settings for each app. Seriously, if you're in an app in order to change some settings, you have to leave the app you were just in and then find the settings app and then go down the list of all your apps, find the app you want to adjust the settings for, adjust those settings, close out the settings app or you know back out of it and then go to the app you initially want to use in the first place. That is definitely not a left brain activity. So I'm one of those guys who just kind of likes to, you know, clean up your phone, close out all the apps and stuff like that. Now, swiping up will get you access to the carousel where all your recent apps were. And that's great because, you know, you can just have them there on the fly. But if you want to close an app, you just swipe it away and it's closed. But if you want to close all the apps at the same time, there is no close all option. Like I haven't seen that. And I actually had a friend come over to my house and kind of give me a little tutorial on, you know, how to use the iPhone for dummies. And, you know, he just said it didn't exist. Maybe somebody knows a secret that I don't know, but I'd like to close out all my apps at one time. That, that just doesn't make sense to me. You know, after trying to figure out all this stuff regarding how to use it, I started to realize even more how heavy this thing is. This is the iPhone 13 Pro Max maximum weight is what that max means. It's it's a heavy phone. It's got a solid build construction, man. They use absolutely premium materials and I love the feel and look of it until I actually have to use it. It's very impractical. If I were to just use a one word, uh, the, you know, these, um, these edges right here, they're really heavy on the pinky and I don't use a case. Uh, so I can only imagine for you guys and girls out there who are using the case, how heavy this phone must be to you, but you're probably used to it. So I guess you do get over that, you know, at some point, but I want to go into one of the last things that I don't like about the phone. And that is the ease of use. Um, and that's also going to show up later because that's actually one of the pros that I like about the phone is the ease of use. But let's talk about the negative side of that. So I've been using an Android phone pretty much since Android was a thing. So it's like when you're using an Android, it's like driving a manual shift car, like a stick shift. You know, you get this nice car and it's got, you know, a lot of horsepower and you just shift it, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then you're just gone, you know what I'm saying? But when you get the iPhone, it feels like I'm stuck in maybe third or fourth gear. You know what I mean? Like it's an, it's, it is, and this is like an automatic. The iPhone is like driving an automatic car and after you've been driving a stick shift all your life. It's nice, you know what I'm saying? It's nice not to have to shift, but every once in a while you want that full control of your car and you want to take off and burn the tires at a light or, you know, really get down on it on the freeway and just, just go, you know what I'm saying? You can't, well, that's not happening here. So that's one of the downsides uh, uh, as far as the, the, you know, the operating system is concerned. Not really a hit on the phone at all because the phone construction and everything about the phone is awesome. It's the software that I have trouble with as a career Android user. But now that takes me to some things that I really, really, really love about this phone. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is the camera. The camera is blazing hot, dude. You, it's really hard to take a bad picture with this camera on auto. It really is. I mean, you could just you could point, shoot, point, shoot, point, shoot. It's, it's so, it's damn near impossible to take a bad picture with this thing. And you know, unless the object is moving like a dog. <laughs> but yeah, the camera, you know, on auto, it takes great pictures. But this is the iPhone Pro Max, iPhone 13 Pro Max, okay? Pro. It has cinematic mode, which we'll talk about in a second, but it doesn't have a pro mode where I can control the shutter speed and ISO and stuff like that. So that's really interesting that, you know, Apple is taking full control of your camera and calling it pro. I just, I just thought that was, you know, pretty interesting. But like I said, the camera takes great pictures on auto. So mm, do you really need a pro mode? I mean, I guess that's debatable. It all depends on who you're talking to. But that cinematic mode, that was actually one of the things that I was really excited about in regards to this phone when I saw it on the keynote. But it needs a lot of work. It is a very, oh man, it, it, it does not look good, man. It, it almost looks like CGI. And I'm not going to put any, you know, footage up here about that because this is not a technical review. There's plenty of comparison videos out there. Uh, lots of people do that kind of stuff, but 
I'm just gonna let you know as an Android user how this phone works and I think the camera works as, as promised, but you get into the cinematic mode and it's like, ah, man, they doctored that stuff up there. Like they had the best conditions in the keynote and everything and on the commercials, because this stuff in real life, it, it, it really looks like pro overly processed and it, it, I did not enjoy cinematic mode. But regular video and photos, this thing comes in clutch every time. Another standout feature to me is Face ID. Face ID works freakishly good. Sometimes, I don't even think it was locked in the first place. That's how good it works, okay? <laughs> it works freakishly good. But I would still appreciate a fingerprint scanner because, you know, if I'm not looking at the, the face of the phone or the camera of the phone, you know, sometimes I just like to, you know, put my finger right there, like on a table and, you know, just kind of see some stuff. So that would be nice. It would also be nice if they had on or screen off display, like the, uh, the Galaxy phones, because, you know, you can always pick it up or tap it or something like that. But I've noticed, you know, a lot of times if my, my Galaxy Note is laying on my nightstand, uh, I just walk across the room or walk by and I can just look, see if I got a little notification or if, you know, I just need to check the time real quick. I don't need to actually interact with the phone. That would be nice if they would incorporate something on the iOS system and on the, uh, or maybe on the next update, who knows if might get it, maybe not. One of the things that's helped me transition from an Android phone into an iPhone is that it actually does play with Google fairly well. I mean, you can always use your, your Gmail, your Google Photos. Me personally, I use, uh, as a YouTuber, I use the uh, YouTube Studio app, which, you know, using all those Google apps that kind of just move from phone to phone with you over the cloud, it's been really nice as a transitional piece between the two operating systems. So I do appreciate, you know, Apple actually playing with Google well in that sense. But since I brought out this YouTube creator app and stuff like that, you know, on Android, every once in a while, social media apps will uh, hang up like YouTube Studio, uh, Instagram is always freaking broken on my Android phone. <laughs> it's my Facebook creator app is always glitchy on my Android phone. I have not had that experience with iPhone. And that's why a lot of people really like iPhones. They just work. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's an in-house system. Uh, for a phone that's built in-house and it all just plays well together. It works extremely well. And that's one thing I can tell you I honestly truly enjoy about the iPhone experience is that everything is just fluid. It's just in-house. That's it. I can't describe it any other way. Everything is in-house and it just works well together. Just works. It's a hell of a concept, man. <laughs> it really is. It just works. But another good thing that I would like to talk about the, uh, the iPhone is the ease of use. A lot of the things about this operating system is kind of just dumbed down a little bit. And I don't mean that as an insult. It's built on the concept of simplicity. And that's good for the masses. Someone who's never used the phone before can probably pick this thing up and just go blazing, okay? I really appreciate that about the phone. I mean, they sell millions and millions of iPhones for a reason. A lot of people just want something that works and they want the simplicity of something that works. And hey, they got it right here, man. The iPhone is clutch, man. This is a, a very, very clutch device for the masses. And I can see why a lot of people like to use it. But it is a shame that in 2021, we are still dealing with this notch on the iPhone. No matter what version you get, you're getting a notch at the top. I don't understand it, man. This is, um, you know, even the budget phones that still have a lot of technology that keep up with a lot of flagships today have pretty much zero bezel from top to bottom and left to right. But we're still stuck with this notch on an iPhone 13. It seems like, you know, Apple should be beyond this by now, but Apple's not necessarily known for being bleeding edge in technology. So I guess that's why we're still stuck with this thing. Now it does fade away after you've used it for a little bit. It doesn't bother me until I realized there's a notch there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell, man? <laughs> I get it, a lot of technology in there, Face ID needs to work and stuff, but come on, Apple, do better. But hey, you know, you, you just get used to it because the phone is a great experience to use as far as like, you know, how beautiful and fluid the screen is and how snappy everything just works together. It's also kind of a sad thing that this 2021 flagship phone still uses the lightning cable. I just don't get that. Why is why does this not have USB-C? They even put it into the new iPad. I, I just don't understand that. All of our other devices have USB-C. Our, our laptops, our earbud cases, damn near everything is moved on to USB-C as a universal thing. So just, just not a big fan of that. Now, the last thing I really wanna talk about is the ecosystem of Apple. 
okay? So in order to have, uh, a lot of people say in order to have a, a the best iPhone experience, you gotta be in the ecosystem, gotta get yourself some AirPods, gotta get yourself the Apple Watch and a MacBook and an iPad and this and that. I don't think so. I think if you um, if you have an iPhone and you just need a phone to, to run your apps and your social media and stuff like that, take some amazing pictures and, you know, be connected to the world, you don't need to be that heavily invested into the ecosystem. Now, when you do want a, a smartwatch or something like that, probably the, uh, the Apple Watch is probably going to be the best way to go as far as connectivity between the two and interaction between the two. But I have a Samsung phone and I don't use the Galaxy Watch that much anymore. I usually use like, you know, a Maze Fit or Tick Watch. That's what I'm usually wearing. As a matter of fact, I got that right now hooked up to my Galaxy Note. So no, I don't think you need to be heavily involved in the ecosystem to have a good iPhone experience because I actually did have a good iPhone experience. I think it's an, a wonderful phone that is directed towards the masses, okay? Uh, I don't think the phone is for everybody simply because I know for a fact it is not for me. This is not my personal phone of choice. I'm sticking with a Galaxy phone. Uh, namely, if you want to specify it down to the, you know, to the nitty gritty, it is always going to be a Note. So I hope Samsung keeps making the Galaxy Notes in the future because I absolutely love this phone and all of its functionality that it comes with under that, that brand name. But the iPhone, you know, the iPhone period, whether it be the last year's model to 12 or this year's model or next year's model i think it's a good choice man if, you, if you're in a, a guy or girl who wants a simple phone to use that's going to be very reliable and built like a tank got to come with that weight though <laughs> i think the iphone's the way to go man so as a first time uh, ios slash iphone user my iphone pro iphone 13 pro max experience has been it's been all right. I can't really complain that much, you know what I'm saying? But it's just not the phone for me. So I won't be dogging out Apple anymore. You know, I used to do that in the past, but uh, this has been all right, man. So I'm no expert in this kind of stuff, but what I do know is, Apple, you did a good job on this phone, man. Keep on doing what you do. <laughs> all right, y'all keep being good to each other and I'll see you when I see you. Hey, man, come here. I'm gonna be real frank with you and tell you that it's freaking weird that you just linger here when the video's over. But if you still wanna hang out with me, it's cool. You can go over to my podcast, man. I'll be over there in just a few minutes. It's called Talk To Me, the podcast nobody asked for, but I'm giving it to you anyway. So go over there and hang out real quick and I'll be there in a minute and we'll get to hang out. I'll see y'all soon. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?